Hey guys, I wanted to come today and do a little update on our pricing video, our comparison of ICF and quality framed, wood framed houses. Um, you know, we've done this about once a quarter since March of 2021 when ICF and wood had gotten to be almost on par for the first time. Over the course of that winter, lumber came down as it needed to and you know, kind of establish that normal disparity between the, you know, qualities of the products. And we did, I think, two or three videos when it was, you know, different. And then by March of 2022, both things had peaked and they were basically on par again because lumber was insane, if you guys remember, just six months ago. By June, there was a, I'll rehash all this, but by June, there was a good price difference again because lumber was on its way down. And lumber's continued to kind of crater. It's uh, Historically, it's not that low, but it's low compared to what we've seen in the last two years. So we're now back to the point of lumber being, you know, the low cost alternative, ICF being the quality play. And what's going to be cool with these videos, as long as that remains to be seen, because a lot of my videos, I, I try to keep them 10, 12 minutes. And is all I have time to do is make the point that when the price is almost the same, you're crazy not to use ICF. Um, but I can really start getting into, hey, there is a price difference. It's not that much, you know, 5%, 6% on the cost of the home. And you're getting so much more for your money. And I can start getting into all those whys as opposed to just going, holy crap, lumber is insane. Uh, why not use this? So, you know, I'm going to do this today. You'll actually see a good price difference. And we'll kind of touch on the the market in general, with housing still being pretty high, um, but interest rates going up. I, I have made this point a million times. It's not that complicated. You know, as interest goes up, payments go up. And then your pool of buyers that can afford payment X is less than, you know, what could afford the lower payment. So, you know, prices have to come down to meet that based on volume of houses, whatever. But so many people are locked into these awesome mortgages um, now that I've, I've been reading articles that it's actually going to make it hard for, you know, companies to hire out of town because people aren't going to want to give up their house and the mortgage they're in. It's kind of a weird, like, you know, I've never seen it in my lifetime where that was such a consideration. It's going to stabilize pretty quickly. It's just going to come down a bit. And honestly, guys, I think almost all your gains in the last 12 months are probably going to evaporate because I don't think they were ever real to begin with. They were based on super, super cheap money interest rates and ridiculous lumber costs. So it just created this ability for everybody to overpay for houses for a minute. So ultimately, once that's stabilized, I think the market's going to be just fine. We'll get into the pricing of the two things real quick. You remember my original videos, I would do them in my shop and I would set up a four by eight panel of ICF it would be six pieces of ICF stacked up and I would do a four by eight wall of zip board two by six framing, spray foam, trying to get close to the thermal qualities of ICF, getting nowhere near the structural qualities, but doing the best I could with the lumber. And at that time, they were both about, just figuring in these four by eight walls. And I used to get hammered about the uh, not putting rebar in there. That's an intentional omission. And I do that because depending on your, your municipality, strapping costs can be way more than rebar costs, or they can be almost negligible. In my market, um, an entire house can be strapped for under $500. It's basically just hurricane clips and garage straps, and that's about it. We go down to Dolphin Island uh, in, the, in a coastal region, and the strapping on a similar house can be many thousands of dollars. I'll link a video to the houses we built down there because I'm going to get into some hurricane thoughts just touching on them uh, given the last week um, in a minute. And those those houses were $7,500 apiece. Um, with strapping. So, I mean, you're talking about many multiples, whereas rebar is pretty much always the same amounts of rebar, no matter where you build. So, um, I, I, I task you guys with doing your due diligence in your market to see where those, those things lie, because a lot of the places ICF really shines, rebar is not more than strapping. Last time, back in June, a framed wall had 10, two by six by eight foot, you needed five of them. Four studs and two plates. I know there's a top plate missing, but still. We've got $10 purse, that's like 50 bucks. Zipboard was down from its high 
of $73 a sheet, which is gross, down to $59 a sheet, which is still gross. Um, the zip tape was at $30 a sheet. It was down from its high of almost 40. And you don't need, um, you only need about uh, a fifth or a sixth of a roll. So you got $6 of, of tape to tape a you know, piece this big. And the insulation, spray foam is the only thing that's gonna get you close. Um, cellulose, I guess, will get you close to, but spray foam, uh, because of the cost of resins, was up to 285 per square foot, which is $91 to fill in this one panel. And that had you to about $206 for this wall. Its high point was 241, which was where we were in March when we were about on par. Um, ICF, I had started adding because back the entire year of 2021, we had basically locked costs on uh, Portland, locked costs on ICF. So we were just riding right there around the $200 range for ICF and concrete. Um, by March, we had had the increase in the ICF. We were paying around five and a quarter a square foot, and that's delivered to most places. Um, then you're going to have um, concrete, which had gone up from, you know, I was paying a, as low as 115 of yard in 2021. We, we, we upped that to 126. And I'll tell you, I, I'm because a lot of you guys don't live in Missouri, in southwest Missouri, um, I'm factoring in more of a national average right now, guys, which is going to be the biggest part of the increase of ICF. Um, locally, if you live in Missouri, you can build it for less than what I'm going to quote. But I don't think it's, you know, fair to... The, you know, most of you guys aren't watching this from Missouri. So, um, you know, I, I factored in 126 a yard. You use 0.59 yards in a 4 by 8 sheet. So you're down to, you're at, um, you know, 243 was the cost of this, which again in March, the lumber was 241. It's basically the same. You were crazy not to be building with ICF back then if you were building. I think back then I said don't build because I think everything is so volatile and overpriced right now um just take a take a breath Look, this may stay that high but everything else that fills in the house is going to come down and you could build the same house six eight months from now which we're now there for considerably less and that seems to be playing out fairly accurately so where are we today the two by sixes are down to 758 per which is like 37 38 dollars so that's you know 12 dollars cheaper the big one is this, and OSB, I mean, it's, it's OSB with a really cool coating on it. It's, I love the product. It's down to thirty-five seventy dollars um, a sheet, which is getting there. I mean, that's an acceptable price in our current market. I, you know, it's way down. It's so far down. It's sort of like gas prices. They go to $5 for diesel. They go down to 4 and we're happy. Um, insulation, we left alone at two eighty-five. dollars Resins are trending down. I would start haggling with your foam guys, everybody. Uh, I would start haggling with your ICF suppliers a little bit. I mean, there's nothing the guys that sell it can do, but they can start putting manufacturers, you know, under a little pressure because their raw material costs are coming down. And I'm hoping, you know, we see, actually can see a decrease in ICF costs by the first of the year. Um, and definitely in spray foam, it was, it's two times or more, more than it was a year ago. And you know, resins were spiking. I do a lot with our pools. We use a lot of epoxy resins and stuff like that. And they're, they're crazy how much they went up in a year. So hopefully that starts trending back down. The cost of the four by eight framed wall is now down to 171, which I think is uh, the second lowest or the lowest since March of 2021. And concrete, the ICF version, still 525 a foot. The, the price of ICF moves a lot slower than, I mean, it doesn't, you know, it's not as volatile. It, it has been trending up because of resin cost and plastics and everything else, but it's the same, but I did factor in 160 a yard. Um, I pay less than that currently. I know a lot of you guys pay 180, 190. I know when, when I do my Angel Fire project, I may pay 200. So it's all over the board um, because Portland is a mess right now is, uh, around the country. There's a lot of suppliers that are just short on product. They cannot sell the amount that they could sell because they don't have it. So they're charging more. And fuel prices, guys, uh, a mixer truck gets five miles to the gallon and it runs the entire time it's on your job site. So, you know, those factors are not inconsequential. So I went ahead and went with kind of a national average of 160 per yard. That brings our cost for this up to 263 for that four by eight sheet. 
um, with the concrete and the ICF factored in. Um, so now we're, you know, $90 difference. That's, you know, like 40, 45% more. Now that is just the outside wall. Everything on the inside is the same regardless of the build, which is where, where you get to, you know, you're going to spend an extra ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 on your outer wall, depending on the size of your house. Could be more, could be less. Um, but then everything else remains the same. There are certain aspects as we get into like my angel fire build that I think there's a better way to build a lot of things that might cost a little more, but the house will last 500 years and be, you know, inconsequential to heat and cool. So, I mean, when we're talking about frame wall to ICF, the, the quality aspect is always going to be a pretty big disparity. ICF is just, you know, head and shoulders above the best wood frame structures you can get. Um, so you're, you're talking about five, 6% difference on the overall cost by the time you get the entire house built with these walls. Um, not a huge deal when you consider the utility savings, um, the peace of mind that this house is going to survive a storm and the quiet nature of these houses. They, they basically dampen almost all sound. So they're, they're, ICF, and I'm going to get into a lot more detail about all the benefits to ICF as we go into my Angel Fire um, plans should be back within about two to three weeks. I'm going to do a whole video on that house and the plans for it. Um, we're still evaluating exactly what products we're going to use, but it's going to be awesome. And it's going to accentuate the modern build from ICF to a ICF decking, concrete floors, concrete roofs. ICF pool. It's going to have everything that I champion in one job. Tons of great content there. Um, but if for a second, I do want to touch on the, the quality aspect. Um, I have a video that I get hammered on a lot called ICF Regret. It's a We have a couple of beach houses that I own with some partners um, in Dolphin Island, Alabama. I'll link the videos to them here and um, I will link the video to the regret video right here. And I'll just tell you right now, the, I, I think in editing, I'm a builder, I'm not a video editor. I've gotten decent at it, but sometimes I just ramble on the camera and then I edit it. And the main point of that video was that I built those houses as structurally sound as you could possibly build a wood structure to the point I I achieved a fortified gold. It's like an energy star rating for structural superiority. And um, I, like I said, I spent all that money on strapping. I did all the work you can do. I, I did it basically to the letter of what the engineer told me to do. And that can get you, a, you know, 150 mile an hour wind rating on the entire structure, which is really good for a wood structure. You can easily achieve 250 mile an hour with ICF. Um, but even though I was already building with ICF, I was already doing ICF pools in 2015 and 2016. I was kind of an early comer on those, um, on those products, but I really didn't get the aspect of elevating light deck. The, 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 the ICF decking was the last piece of my puzzle mentally as far as really getting the full benefit. So the ICF regret video was intended to make the point that I wish I had, if I could go back in time and build those houses at ICF, I'd have a lot more peace of mind. Because what we just saw happen in Fort Myers and Sanibel Island, I mean, I've been sick to my stomach for those guys because that could have just as easily been us. It has been us. Um, you know, 04 and 05, we had Ivan and Katrina in back-to-back -back years that uh, destroyed 300 homes on the island. Um, and I really believe, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to let the dust settle before I get into a big video on this because I don't want to, you know, hurt anyone's feelings who's just lost their home or, you know, had had significant damage or just, you know, you know, lost things in that in that storm. But if I had a chance to rebuild today, and I hope I don't ever get that chance, but the realities are that I might, um, I would not hesitate. It would there would be no thought in my head. I would I would go ICF. On a, on a full concrete structure. There's a really famous picture after Hurricane Michael, which just missed us, hit uh, Mexico Beach in Florida. I'll show you this picture here. That house was a Nudura build. And I mean, look, the devastation around it is basically total and it lost its windows. Um, and you know, probably had a lot of water damage to the sheetrock and stuff inside, but the structure remained un unfazed. So um, we're going to get into a lot of that this winter. I got a lot of really cool content. Obviously, we have a training coming up in a couple weeks that I've got to get ready for. 
Uh, next week, I'm going to do... Um, the, the, I did a little short the other day on a light deck roof we're getting ready to pour. We're pouring that next week. That'll probably be my video next week is just showing you guys how that goes. And uh, yeah, so lots of cool content. Uh, I think prices are starting to regulate. Just seems like everything happens a lot slower on the way down than it does on the way up. But just hang in there. And this is still you know the future, the way. Um, and it makes all the sense in the world. And I will get into all the reasons why as time goes on. We'll be back on another one of these videos, probably about December or January. So I will talk to you guys next week and uh, hope you guys have a good week.